This short video is brought to you by the Faculty of Education. Enjoy. Optimism is a key part of the problem and solution to climate change. As a general rule, humans are optimistic. It's a well-studied field within psychology, and according to this TED Talk, optimism biases. A cognitive illusion that we've been studying in my lab for the past few years, and 80% of us have it. It's our tendency to overestimate our likelihood of experiencing good events in our lives and underestimate our likelihood of experiencing bad events. So we underestimate our likelihood of suffering from cancer, being in a car accident. We overestimate our longevity, our career prospects. In short, we're more optimistic than realistic, but we are oblivious to the fact. I'm 100% guilty of this with the most obvious example being my constant over-optimism about how long tasks are going to take me to complete. From an evolutionary perspective, that makes sense. If our ancestors, when confronted by a saber-tooth, believed they could escape it, then they'd probably try harder, and that would increase their chances of survival, which is a good thing. The problem comes when we project that optimism into the future. In the previous post, we talked about a lack of action in the build-up to disaster, being driven by this desire not to believe we're heading for trouble, and optimism is simply the flip side of the same coin. We have this strong belief that things will turn out okay, and often that stops us from responding to threats with an appropriate level of action. In the last post we mentioned the Second World War, the fall of Rome, failing businesses and the financial crash, but over-optimism exacerbates so many problems, with the most recent example being coronavirus. A large-scale pandemic was predicted by many, with Bill Gates famously warning of this in his 2015 talk, The Next Outbreak, We're Not Ready. I honestly believe this is one of our most fundamental flaws as human beings, but I also believe there must be a solution to this problem. There has to be a way that we can consciously counter this bias. To be clear, I am all for optimism, and we are going to need it. It means we're less likely to give up, more likely to overcome challenges, and ultimately more likely to survive. However, we have to get better at identifying when optimism is toxic to achieving our end goals and when it plays a vital part of the solution. Recognising whether unwarranted over-optimism is leading us down a path of inaction that sets us up for disaster or if it is driving a positive change and innovation in the face of adversity will be key to solving this crisis. Put simply, recognition plus optimism plus action equals success over-optimism plus inaction equals let's not go there. If you believe you personally could be affected by climate change, then you're more likely to send that email to your MP demanding change, to chip away over time at building sustainable habits, or to move your pension into companies that are driving positive change. This is why this matters. We should be encouraging people to challenge their optimism to question their belief that things will turn out okay for them and their loved ones if we continue to fall short of scientific advice, to ask ourselves if our optimism is holding us back from taking action on climate change, whilst also encouraging the type that best sets us up for success and prevents us from giving up. I wholeheartedly believe it's possible to build a better future for ourselves, but we must back up our optimism with action.